I am Bearcat, and welcome to Ryan Peterson. All right, last week we visited a house that the entire house was converted into a professional recording studio. And this week we're doing it again. This studio is truly an example of an epic home studio setup. I mean, and the story of it, of how he got it and put this whole thing together is also very interesting. We'll see that when we do the walkthrough. The studio is called Bearcat Recording and my friend Ryan is the guy who runs the studio. Ryan is a songwriter and a producer, audio engineer, mixer who has all of the gear. I, I'm serious, I think he actually has all of the gear. Speaking of, I have been having a ton of fun doing these one-on-one -on -one consultations with you guys on your studios, your plans, and your gear questions. And if you didn't know, you can actually book a call with me to go over some of this stuff. And if that sounds interesting to you, head on over to my website at andrewmastersmusic.com and schedule your consultation today. It's a great way for us to chat about your epic studio goals and a great way to support this channel and what I do here. Again, that's andrewmastersmusic.com. The link's down in the description. I'll put a link to Ryan and his studio stuff as well so you can follow him. Don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button for this channel. Leave a comment down below and let's go check out Bearcat Recording. I am Bearcat and welcome to Ryan Peterson. <laughs> No, I am Ryan Peterson. Welcome to Bearcat Studios in Nashville, Tennessee. Dude, this uh, is awesome, man. Thank you. I'm so stoked you're here. Home studio. Literally. It, it is a house that is a studio, yes. Literally the whole home is a studio. Is a studio. Not, yeah. You don't live here. I do not live here. Okay. I mean, I live here, but right. I don't live Right. Oh, here. sure. Right. Yeah, you yeah. spend all your time here, but yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, no, but this is essentially like, I think this is the dining room we're standing in now. And then oh, this, yeah. this is the, what would be considered your living room more or less which is now my control room dude so. it's so cozy thank you how long have you been in here 2020 so i actually okay i was four supposed years. to four years i was supposed to move in the day after the tornado oh gosh hit, ran through east nashville a cartage company called me and they were like hey man we can't uh get to your and i'm like yeah i can't even get out of my you know <laughs> off my street so we'll do this another day so yeah, it got yeah. delayed by a week but yeah it was right then and i guess that was like early march Wow. So. All right, so tell me about this house. How did you find it? And then how did yes. it come to be this? So this house, it was a studio when I got it. A really good friend of mine he had it very set up very similar. Basically, I needed, a, I'm a drummer, and I needed a drum room in town to record drums at because my I had a, like a little writing production room in my house in East Nashville, but I couldn't cut drums there. And I got tired of driving to Berry Hill or wherever the owner of this place had an awesome 60s Rogers drum set that was always mic'd up, ready to go. And it was also six minutes from my house. Yeah. So I got in touch with him and would start booking him for just drum sessions. And it was super easy. And eventually he and I became good friends. He decided to transition out of the field of audio. And I started renting the place from him. And after about six months of renting it, like full, like on a lockout basis, he was like, hey man, I think I'm gonna sell it. And like, if you want it, I'll, sell it to you oh my god and so thankfully the stars aligned and yeah it worked out that's amazing yeah the dream scenario there you find a good spot you live in it just long enough to know that it's working yep exactly and familiar with it and yeah. now you don't have to throw money down the garbage and rent no i mean it's it's been it's been, i feel very very lucky so. man <clears throat> super cool okay so What's the layout? Can we, this is obviously yes. a little lounge here. Kind of, kind of lounge. This is, you know, it's obviously not perfect where people can't sit behind you and listen, but you know, when I have writing sessions or whatever, people sit here and I can even bring a controller out. Like if someone wants to play keys or something sure, like that. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, so this is sort of the nice little decorations. You put, yeah, some, put some love into I did. I did. I feel like a lot of dudes on your channel are like, I gotta, I gotta give props to my wife. Uh, and I do, she, she had the idea of like, oh, you should do like a maximalist wall and like yeah. all this stuff. So it's, this is cool. She, she bought me a lot of these things that you're looking at right now. This, where did you find this? Uh, that was an Etsy purchase, but I was inspired by, um, uh, it wasn't one of your videos, so I'm not sure I'm allowed to talk about it. <laughs> we'll cut this off. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Edit. Another producer in LA had like a legit, like live moss wall. Like wow. almost as acoustic treatment. And so this is preserved moss. It's not, it's dead. Oh, okay. Because he actually had to spray his with water. And I was oh like, my God. I'm like, yo, 
Yeah. That's not a, I don't want to have water around this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and also that's like a lot of work. Yeah. And he's in a temperate climate LA, like three days with the heat on here during a snowstorm. Yeah, yeah, it's and not, it would be not terrible. terrible. But I, so I found her, I found some woman on Etsy who builds these things and uh, yeah, she made one. This is killer, man. Yeah. Uh, so. so you ever listen to the Foo Fighters? <laughs> I could, you could say I'm a fan. I mean, <laughs> Dave, Dave Grohl was one of like, when I first got into drumming when I was like 14, 15, he was a major influence, but then also like drummers like him, like Butch Vig, yep. uh, Don Henley even, drummers that did more than just drum. Those people were my initial inspirations of like, oh wow, he's a drummer, he's also a frontman, he's a songwriter, he's a producer, you know, all this stuff. So, but yeah, big fan of the Foos and uh, seen him a few times, got the posters to prove it. Good. Yeah. Got the receipts. Got the receipts. Uh, but yeah, and then we can start kind of back here and then work our way back through. Yeah. But this is got a full kitchen. The full kitchen vibe. And I'm actually going to make myself a cup of coffee here. It's, oh, Nespresso? Nespresso. Dude, Oops. high roller. High ro yeah, I mean, you know. Oh, look at that, dude. Mm -hmm. Fresh. You hear that seal pop? <laughs> if the family was here, Mm -hmm. Not an ideal kitchen. No, but no, for no, no. a studio, yes, absolutely perfect. Yeah, I mean, I can almost touch. <laughs> I, when I'm here, I can touch the wall and the refrigerator at the same time. Yeah. So it's not it's not really spacious. You're yeah. not going to be doing a lot of like high level cooking, but it does. It is convenient, like for the holidays. Like when I got to buy a bunch of extra food for guests or something, I can come here and store it in the studio fridge. Yeah, full full fridge. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't have a dishwasher, which can be. Uh, yeah. That's why we have interns. Two or over. No. <laughs> Application in the description. <laughs> exactly. Um, nice Brian Wilson mug. Yep. Now, tell me a little bit about you. You, because we talked before this, and yeah. you were in LA before you moved yeah. here, and well, we had some similar We have a little experience. Similar paths. Born and raised, uh, Los Angeles area. I grew up actually north of LA by about an hour. Town called Oak Park, Ventura County. Yeah, got bit by the bug when I, and I come from a musical family. My dad's oh, cool. also a songwriter, <clears throat> producer. So I got bit by the bug when I was, you know, in high school, started drumming, and then went to Cal State Northridge as a piano major while I was drumming as well. I actually auditioned on drums and got turned down. <laughs> nice. And then started making my living as a drummer <laughs> while I was a piano major there. I was like, well, this is funny. Um, so I did that for a couple of years and then went to an audio engineering program out there at Citrus College, which is like oh, Azusa Pacific, like way kind of far away from LA. But I was still, I, I commuted every day. That was a brutal commute. From there, uh, I started assisting, or I started running rather, at a uh, studio called The Village Recorder Yeah, on the west side. Very famous studio in LA. Yeah, big 30,000 square foot, like it used to be a Masonic temple. And oh, cool. yeah, and so it's it's just full of history. And I'm a lives. Freemason. I found out, uh, it took the, me a lot, my life to figure out, but someone in the comments told me I'm a Freemason. So there you go. It's pretty sick. <laughs> you found out via YouTube? Yeah, someone said like, oh, your logo, oh, you're a Freemason. I was like, oh, nice. really? Is yeah. that how you become in it? Yeah, yeah exactly, cool. exactly. It's just make a logo. Wouldn't that be hilarious if that's really <laughs> I, have, I don't even know, I mean, is that like Nicolas Cage National <laughs> Treasury? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, the Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, started doing that and then did was an assistant at the village for a couple years and then started freelancing and from there ended up signing a publishing deal with Sony, ATV, so songwriting, engineering, drumming, doing all the things. And then in 2015, my wife and I moved out here. That's great. And so yeah, we're, we're still in the East Nashville area, but... Which is the spot for people who don't live here and have no idea about Nashville. East Nashville is literally the spot that you kind of have to be unless you already have 10 Grammys and you don't need money or work anymore. Yeah. Um, then you move to Brentwood or Gallatin or whatever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Green Thrills, wherever you want to go. Green Thrills. Yeah. <laughs> I've been here since, since 2015. Do a bunch of music for film and television now, along with records. And so that's this, this is where I do the majority of them. All right, so drummer, keys, mm -hmm. and then producer, engineer, writer. Yep. All right, let's, let's get into it. Let's see. Yeah. So come on in. This is the battle station. All right. So first, I want to point out treatment here. You've, uh, I think people, especially online, get really in the weeds with treatment. And I think when you, you meet people who do this for a living, you realize that it's, uh, you don't have to. <laughs> yeah. No, this is a normal house. 
The walls, I mean, they're probably not uh, fully perpendicular because it's old, but <laughs> at this point. Yeah, but, I mean, like uh, the ceiling up there. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, if you if you look, this whole thing slopes left to right. Oh, yeah, yeah, Which yeah. I did for acoustic reasons. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, to your point, like, I bought all this, uh, like, rigid 703 fiberglass or whatever. I don't know if it's 703, but yeah. rigid fiberglass from a, another place in East Nashville about 10 minutes away for, I think, 75 bucks. Yeah, there's a whole factory that yeah, makes yeah, it, right? Yeah, yeah. You just wear gloves. And yeah. then I got, these are actually, um, I made these frames. Nice. So I, I just went down to Lowe's. This is the, the hack I learned online, and I can't remember from who, but these are um, like threshold covers from yes. like room to room. Yeah. But they cover up the edge so Beautiful. nice. Beautiful, it's and, really nice. And it was, they were very, I did have to go to like four Lowe's's yeah, all over. To get enough. To all, yeah, because I was they're like, uh, someone's like, how many doors are in your house? I'm like, never mind, it's not for doors. And so. Beautiful. Sounds great. I got some big GIK, like bass trap things up behind that you can't really see. Um, and I probably could have made those too, but yeah, it was just easier to order them. Sure. So. All right. So we got some some homemade stuff. You got a cloud above. Homemade stuff, cloud above. And that's it. And then a gear. And then a lot of gear. A lot of gear as diffusion. Yeah, exactly. Plus these things. What are these? Are these like? Yeah, these are diffusers. And they were here when I bought the place, and I just left them. Cool. So easy. Yeah. Done. Done. Acoustic treatment. <laughs> Treated. Check. Sick, dude. Yeah. All right. Now, so here's something that's unique and cool about your space that mm -hmm. catches my eyes. All the gears in road cases. Yes. So I, like you, uh, move things around constantly. And I'm buying stuff constantly and selling stuff constantly. So having a flexible sort of means to rack and store them is helpful and what's also nice is everything's on wheels so if i just yeah. need to move something you know all you do is and then i can get back to my console or hide behind here when there's clients i don't like yeah, or something you know dude. it's it's yeah and then you just put it back super easy my my one thing that i may get into is actually doing like those big uh, edac or elko connectors oh, yeah, yeah so all i got to do for wiring is, is just one. One and done. Yep. Um, Cause occasionally like, when you first texted me and you're like, bro, I'd love to come by. I literally, like I'll show you photos after this. Like everything in here, including the console was like, I couldn't walk in. Oh yeah. Because I was like doing cable runs and figuring stuff out. And I'm like, man, this would have been simpler if I could have just, that's also like not fun money to spend. No. Where you're like, cool. Now I can no. plug my things in like faster. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Yes, everything's on road cases. I actually have a equipment lift, a 500 pound lift in the basement that'll bring up. Oh my God. That'll just, it's on wheels and I can, cause that's about 300 pounds. Yeah. So I can't move it myself. You can't move that yourself? No, sorry bro. <laughs> lift with your knees, <laughs> not your back. You gotta uh, get underneath it. Yeah, but all I got, all you gotta do is pop it up about an inch and then I can, I'm just like a shopping cart. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah. What a great little console too, the oh. 1608. It's Mark II, is that what that yes, is? Yes, 1682, it's awesome. I mean, API preamps we all know and love, the EQs are great. And I mean, I don't, like we were talking earlier, I don't really like do full bumper to bumper mixes on this. It's usually like, I'll take all of my drums and re-record them back into Pro Tools as like 12 channels down to like six or eight. Right. Oh, cool. Like, yeah, I'll yeah. take my three kick mics and I just have a kick. Yeah. You know, and then I have a snare or whatever. A little submix. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like a premix, if you will, an appetizer. And this is super fun for that. It's super fast on tracking. Like I was showing you too, like, I'll have snapshots saved for tracking. So the gains don't change, obviously, but I can have oh, fader that's levels beautiful. saved. So when I'm trying to go fast, I'll be like, I've got my coals as overheads, I've got this as, you know, whatever, and everything kind of shows up, dumps out the same. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thanks. Well, you know, getting sounds and stuff so much faster. So super easy, super fast. It sounds great. The API stuff is incredible. Yeah, it's it it's took awesome. me it took me a long time growing up in <clears throat> in you know East West with big Neves. Yeah, you know, well, to and, and Neves are to, great too. I'm not gonna kick one of those out of bed. But, yeah, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're awesome. These are really really great. Yes. All right, so we got your drum set up here. Close rooms, far rooms, overheads. Yeah, and we'll, when we go to the drum room, we'll can, go check it all we'll, out. We'll, we'll see all that. This is actually one of the mixes I was doing. What a luxury, man. This yes. is beautiful. I feel Got super. the radio on there. Mm -hmm. What are these, SSL little gates or something? No, so these are the, it's, it's the listen mic compressor. They don't make these anymore. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, 
And it basically just like, but if I put one of these on like the bathroom mic, yeah, it's like like super huge, blows it up. They're super fun. But I scored because they don't make them. They do a plug-in now that's actually pretty good. But um, I got the pair of these for four hundred bucks on oh, eBay, wow. and they, they, it was like a new inbox, and it was one of those resellers that like buys the inventory out of oh, a yeah. place that goes out of business, and they're like, we don't know, and I was like, but oh, I know, and yeah, yeah, yeah. so. I ended, I ended up scoring on those, but they're they're fun. They are not subtle. Dude, you have so much gear. This is like a, a dream. Problem? It, well, <laughs> a problem, dream, these are words that we, mm, we yeah. conflate. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at this. This is not, these are legit Yuri's or yes, you know, so somebody these can are, roast me in the comments for how I'm saying that, but I think, the, I the think you're Yuri's. right. I will, I will not roast you, but yeah, classic para LA3As, vintage, um, Rev F, 1176s. Yeah. 1178. 1178, baby. DBX 160s, which are uh, incredible, classics. unbelievable. Distressors. Do you have gear that you've like bought, or excuse me, sold and then re repurchased? It may happen soon. This is my third pair of distressors. Yeah, yeah, where you I, get just, I, I get rid of them because I'm like, man, I'm not using them. Like months go by and I'm like, oh, I really could use a distressor. So I'm never going to sell those ever again <laughs> until I retire. And then, this is literally all of the things everyone wants, like all the staples. LA2, yeah, I mean, tube tech, you got the actual tube tech. Yep. When did you start acquiring this addiction? When I was 14, <laughs> and I'm 39 now. So some of this stuff I've been dragging around with me for quite a while. It's incredible, man. Thank you. I always have to point out, I think it's rare, and I think most people get it, but sometimes people who watch these videos just see it and they go, wow, how did you afford to buy all that all at once, you know? And yeah, no, it's, it's definitely a... not an all at once proposition. 100% <laughs> no. But I mean, also, you have to remember, I mean, when I was 14, 200 years ago, things were a, a lot, lot cheaper. cheaper. Way cheaper, yeah. Like, I remember, and I, I there was gear, gear that I like, I passed on, that now I'm like, that's like, people want $12,000 for a 67 in good yeah. condition. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you could have bought one back then for like, 3,500 bucks, mm. maybe 5,000 if it was like minty fresh, which is still a ton of money. Yep. But the fact that you could have gotten three, two or three of those for the price of one now yeah. is bananas. Super bananas. All right, and then well, let's yeah, go on this yeah, one. Wanna... I, there's some cool stuff over here that I'm not familiar with. Are these e EQs? EQs, DW Fern. I had a pair of uh, Pultec Mastering EQs, like the classic yeah. EQ, yep. the, 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 the normal one we all love. And I loved them. I have zero problem with them. They were great. But I used the stereo version of this, the VT5, and man, it just sounded awesome. And usually at the beginning of every year, I try to swap stuff out because I find I'll get in a rut or whatever. Um, the one cool thing it has versus the Poltex is it actually has a mid cut instead nice. of just being, so yeah. super handy if you want to get rid of some mud. I was just recording with Sam last week and we, I had this on acoustic guitar, it sounded phenomenal. So they're awesome, really, really cool. Cleaner than a Poltec mm -hmm. and not as like thick in the low end. Mm -hmm. They can still get big, but it's not, I feel like Poltecs when you yeah, crank. A bit, a bit much. Yeah, it that's can why you got that second knob, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and then if we go up, big fan of this company, Magic Death Eye. Um, Magic Death Eye, I've never heard of it. Yeah, there, so he's, it's a guy named Ian Sefchik, I think is how you say his last name, in okay. California. He used to be a mastering engineer at Capital, still a mastering engineer now, but Capital Mastering folded during the pandemic. But he hand builds these. Wow. It's kind of a Fairchild inspired, but very much his own thing. He hand winds his own transformers. Jesus. And it's got a really cool features, like you can mix the dry level back into the signal for some transient you know, information that's maybe getting lost, and he has a limiter built in. So this cool. kind of lives on my master bus. There's actually a plugin he makes because I have a mono unit from him as well. That's it doesn't have the limiter or mix or dry level circuit, but it's it's awesome. It's super smooth sounding, Fairchild inspired, but not really. Mm -hmm. DDMF I think is a company, and they make a plugin, and I mean it's great, and I think it's 150 dollars. Oh wow! So it's if if you want to try it, I was actually pretty shocked when I A beat it. I was like, wow. And then what's this VCA up there? Vertigo VSC2. It's like a, it's same idea of like an SSL quad compressor. Mm -hmm. It's more flexible. It's got the high pass. Sounds great. It's really, really good. Killer. Yeah. And then the other, you know, DBX, the classics. XTs. Oh, you got the overstair. What's this overstair? Oh, I have a lot of overstair stereo. gear. So this is a stereo fed. So this is kind of, it sort of reminds me of my 1178 with some more harmonic 
controls. I can't believe how few knobs and switches are on it. Yeah, compared to my the Modulo channel over there, that the, that thing's scary. Everything else he makes. Yeah, <laughs> um, but it's great. This uh, when I'm doing stuff hybrid, uh, I love putting that on drum bus. It's really, oh, cool. really, really good. Sounds great. It's cool. Yeah. And this is the 3706. 3706. Yeah, stereo vet. Cool. That's fun stuff. I love. Yeah, finding gear that I've never seen before. Yeah, and it's got a blend circuit, which is pretty common in a lot of new gear, but it's yeah. fun to be able to be like, I'm going to dime this and then back it off. Yeah. So, Incredible, man. Just yeah. up here, like this whole... And then you got the Lynx Aurora. Lynx Aurora ends, you know, it was funny. I used to have a Focusrite RedNet system, mm -hmm. and it was great. I have the conversion sounded great. Look cool, big red thing. Uh, it was loud. And a fan in it that was super loud. And oh, at yeah. the time, I was at my place where my like I was cutting vocals in the room, and you Just it had on. it had software where you could turn it off, but it's then it would overheat and shut off. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, man, I need a one unit, no fan, and they delivered. So I've got 64 IO. Wow, fantastic. Yeah, they they sound great. They're rock solid, and I am a big supporter of companies that are amazing with support. Oh yeah. And they are one of them. Anytime I've had an issue, which has been very few they email me back within like 10 minutes and then they'll get on the phone with you. They'll talk you through stuff. Yeah. And they're like, hey man, it sounds like it could be a firmware update. I, we have a beta if you want to try it and they'll just send it to you. Like, yeah. they're so good. So that's, that's I, I feel, you know, it's, it makes me feel nice that you're in good hands when you're not having to like wait on Well, especially when you're paying, paying yeah. top dime for yeah. stuff like that too. Uh, which brings me to these speakers. Yes, ATC. Look at these. <clears throat> Classics. S these are the 25s. Right? Yeah, these are the V1s. I haven't actually heard the V2s yet, but I love them. They sound great. When I had a room that had these, and I was like, "Oh wow, those are impressive." Yeah, East West, everyone would fight over who has the ATCs yeah. in the room. Yeah, they're great. And all the, I mean, they're kind of their whole range. Like the the big 45s are great. The oh yeah, the mammoth ones, they're all really good. There's some other really cool, interesting. What are these big fatties in here? Yes. In okay, we'll start. These are there's a company out of Kansas called. Um, Coil Audio. Oh, that's right. They make yes. the huge gear. And as you see. So I've got two different versions of preamp. There's the CA70, which is, I think the circuit is based on the Gates SA70 preamp, like okay. an old, like really old. Yeah, yeah. Maybe from like from the 40s, 30s, something like that. Yeah. Uh, tube preamp. They sound great. These kind of are like, I, I sort of think these are like the American muscle car. Yeah. Like Camaro, big, huge low end. Um, and then it's got this really interesting negative feedback circuit, which, like when you dime it all the way to the right, it makes the signal really dark. And then when you turn it all the way off, it like opens up the signal and almost makes yeah. it sound like it's closer to you. Like interesting. It's it's they're they're very cool. Kick snare overheads. I got the modular channel from Overstare. We were talking about where sort of a really interesting <laughs> tone box. That's. I'm sorry. Did you say? Channel, yeah, like yeah, yeah. One it's, channel. It's well, it's <laughs> technically. I, I think it isn't it called a yeah, modular channel. It is. It, it's. It's. It's not. Even though it's a stereo. Oh, okay. Um, and this has the preamps in it, which sound great. Although I don't use the preamps that much. This is mostly a mixing tool. Because I'm real, real wild. With real it. wild. Because like sometimes I'll try to like when I'm tracking, I'll be like, oh, I'll put that on there. But you know, it's hard when you're tracking yourself. Yeah. And then I'll overcook the room mics, and I'm like, well, those aren't useful because I just made them sound like yeah, just crazy. I love these EQs, uh, Seaman W295B. The um, Sound Toys, is it the Psy oh, Psyq? Yeah, or yeah, Psy yeah. CQ, whatever it is. Uh, it's, it's based on this, same, nice. same same exact thing. But these are awesome. What um, do you like those on? Acoustic guitar, electrics, they're just really good. And it's kind of, it's funny, it's one of those where you can turn them all the way up and it doesn't hurt. Yeah. like, oh wow, that's fun. Yeah, buddy. Um, more API stuff, I had this before I bought the console, so I still have them. 550Bs, actually a vintage pair of 550As. Aside from being maybe a little bit more like mellower on the top end, they're, uh -huh. they're identical. It's pretty cool to have a company that yeah. like, where you're Consistent. like, yeah, it's like, oh wow, that's wild. Um, Cause they, these, they don't have, they have different op amps in them than these anyway. So that's affecting the sound. Stay Standard, levels. Yep, stay level, super fun. Stretch, you ever mess with these? Uh, I have it. Super cool. They're based on like the noise reduction circuits for like what like Dolby, you know, used to use and stuff like that okay. to, for like for, yeah. for tape. But it's so it's doing this like EQ curve that's also acting as a compressor. It's got a mix knob, but I love it. It's they're like it's amazing on like kicks and snares, getting things fat or doing cool like smiley face. You know, a lot of low end, a lot of high end stuff. And then an XQP deesser that 
uh, no one wants to buy. <laughs> <laughs> Which, it's an amazing DSer. Yeah. But I just do all my DSing in the box now. You know what I mean? Like. You mean nothing does it like that? Well, <laughs> it, I will say this. If I get a vocal that's completely out of whack, yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes just running it through stuff, yeah. and it's awesome, but I mean, like, now I'm automating when sure. the DSer's on and off. Like, it's a whole thing. I don't think I've used that in quite a while. But it is really great. That company makes good stuff. 1084. There we go. Classic. Kind Beautiful. Of vocal channel. And then the undertone, the, the full Monty with the preamp and the EQ. And I love. Bass. That's what bass was on. That's what Sam was plugged into last time he was here. Dude, that, the undertone stuff is so good. The EQs are crazy. I literally have to keep the cheat sheet. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah, exactly. This is not for me to be like, I, I love undertone audio. Like, yeah, yeah. it is fully like, I for, I get lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll be like, why is this sounding so messed up? Oh, oh yeah. Because the shape. I, yeah, because the shape's all out of whack or the yeah, cue's yeah. messed up or something. So I'm sure if I used it every day or had it on a console, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I might not oh, have to God. think about it as much, but it, it's incredible. It's, I will say this it not only will get you out of jams for stuff that's tracked poorly, even if maybe I'm responsible for that, but it is just super creative and you can really get sounds that are unlike any other EQ. So I'm actually, I'm actually looking for another one because I'm fussy. I want the one with the metal knobs. Oh yeah, to yeah, match. Yeah, yeah. And, well, I think they're, I think they're. Re I think they're out. reissuing. Yes, I'm just if they don't have the metal knobs, I'm gonna be bummed. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they just came out with the 500 too. Well, the yes, 500s. and I know you you got them. And mm -hmm. the only thing I wish they had was the filters, because the, these filters are really useful. Yeah. But I mean, dude, it's 500 with that all that power. Dude, it's it's gnarly. Yeah, it's crazy what you can do. And then, then these guys. I literally just got these. Picked these up on Monday. Just wow. adding more tubes to the tube arsenal. Yeah. Sometimes if I'm gonna track something, I'll track everything through the API. It'll be like drums yeah. to the API, bass, guitars, keys, whatever it is. And then other times I'll be like, I'm gonna have an all tube front end. Ooh, nice. And try to keep it that way. Sometimes I feel like, you know, people talk about like, oh, glue. And sure, you can get mixed bus glue, but I find that sometimes tracks play nicer together when it's all tracked through the same thing. Mm. I don't know if, uh, and not that you can't make great records with a different preamp for everything. Sure. but. Because I am able to do it, I'm kind of having fun doing it. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. That's been my recent thing. So these are great. These are sort of like in between the CA set. Oh, and the 286. This is more of their like European inspired preamp. Like I think like a EMI. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know about an EMI, but maybe more like on the Telefunken end, like a V76. V70, oh, okay. Maybe. I mean, or flame me in the comments if I'm wrong. Flame. Um, Leave but the flames below. These are yeah. These are. Uh, sort of I find in between these two and I've only had them for literally 72 hours so cool but I'm, I'm really enjoying them so far and it's you know it's handy it's they've got the filter yep these, these guys are, are big believers in like don't uh don't pollute the circuit with like phantom power so you have to have like oh, separate yeah. phantom supplies yeah, 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 yeah totally cool I can get behind that but it yeah. is convenient to have phantom <laughs> yes. yeah 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 that's awesome. All that's, right. That's these, and then well, we got hold the... on. So check this out. I got to point this out. So you got okay. the console, but you put it to the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So it's out of the way. Mm -hmm. And then you have your I'm in control here in the middle. Yes, I'm in control thing here in the middle, which is nice. Um, nothing's in the way. Nothing's in the way. Nothing's between me and the speakers. You can stand I up can... too. Yes, it's a stand up desk, so I can just Ooh, nice. lift it up, which. I love I love editing this way yep. because I edit faster because <laughs> yep. it's like I'm standing. I need to sit down soon. And now that I look at that, that is a much nicer version than the one I have. I can send you the link. So link me, bro. I'll we'll link put it in the description for anyone. Link else me, too. bro. But yeah, I think it was like 120. Wow, not too bad. Wow, Amazon, the classic. Wow, it's really solid build. Yeah, and a lot of surface area on there too. What's nice is if I am like, oh, I'm gonna go play keys and I want to have this. Yeah, I bro. just wheel it over you know, whatever I'm doing. Yep. And then I can drag it back to the roads. It's all really handy. The one thing I'm still figuring out, I like quite literally just had this set up only now for like three weeks, is figuring out where, how far back to sit. So I'm right. gonna I'm gonna tape off as soon as I find that out. Yeah. Cause some days I'm like, I'm gonna go just a little yeah, further yeah. back. And my, my one big thing that my tech just built for me that I'm super excited about, uh, the API does not come with a talkback remote. Uh, so okay. he found this cool thing on Amazon, I think for $12, Okay. there's a little receiver. It looks like a garage door clicker and I might be opening and closing someone's garage in Nashville, <laughs> but it 
required no modification of the desk. There's just an input that is powered off of. Oh, uh, great. And so I can control the talkback with I this. I love that. And because now if I'm like reaching over to do this, this kind of is not the most yeah. ergonomically friendly. But now I can just do this. He was so pumped on it. It's so funny. He, he was like, I love that we cracked the code on this. Yeah. So API, call call him if you want uh, cool talkback remotes. <laughs> Um, all right, and you're a key player, and you're producing and writing, so you got it all right next to you. Got it all right next to me. I did experiment, actually. These all used to be in the uh, booth okay. that we will see in a moment. Yep. And wow, that was a mistake. Yeah. It was, that was a huge... Because I thought, I was like, what if I make it keyboard land? And I yeah. have I have like an extra set of like tiny KRK speakers that I've had forever. Yeah. I was like, I'll put those in there, get a monitor controller. It'll be sweet. It was not sweet. Yeah. I never used it. I was yeah. like, oh, you know what, I'll just pull up a plug-in. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter. It's too inconvenient. It's, it's too inconvenient. In yeah, and so I brought it all back here. Um, I got the. I had another Jasper's stand, but I got this big boy. And normally, you know, with a weighted controller, I would go try them out and whatever. This is the only one I found that fit within oh, yeah. this. Because all of them had generally had some Huge. extra, you know, yeah, like, and they wouldn't fit. So. That's literally the only reason. And it's great. So far, I love it. But I had to, I had to take a risk where it was just like... It's pretty um, pretty great size. What is this one? Deeper? Is that what it's yeah, called? Yeah, Dope Fur. Dope Fur. It's... Okay. Uh, or, I don't know how you say it. Again, yeah. in Dope the comments. Dope Fur. I Dope like fur. that. But it's great. You know, got the mod wheel, pitch bend. Um, the feel is really, really good. Um, it actually is built into oh, a yeah. road... It's built into a road case. Yeah, love that. So if you travel with it... I guess. Super I don't know why you travel with an 88 key, but yeah. Um, but then, yeah. And moving up, we got the Mellotron. And it's all routed. Which all is my routed. Favorite. So that's that was the big, again, efficiency, being able to like yep. create and go. I haven't hooked up the MIDI yet because I was still figuring some stuff out. But I've got it all going into this, uh, what is this? Ashley stereo line mixer. Line something? mixer thing. Yeah. Exactly. I think I saw I saw a video with um oh, what's his name? Bunch of composing. That's gonna bother me. I'll remember later, but he he had all these all over his studio, yeah. And I was like, that's genius. And if you, you know, need to mute it or whatever, I have them all open. But if you had like a uh, like a Juno 106 where the chorus Noise. is going, yeah, you could just cut it for when you're not using it. Um, but yeah, then it just dumps out as a stereo pair. Yeah. And if I need to, I can come out individual pairs if I really like needed to track sure, all yeah. of these simultaneously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But have them on separate discrete inputs. But it's also fun to like, you know, like. Great for writing. Yeah. You know. Amazing. So. Got the Mini Moog too. Mini Moog up here. Um, Prophet 6, again, kind of a, I feel like a modern studio staple. Yeah. And then this one's fun, realistic. Realistic MG1 Concert Mate, and it is a. It was Realistic was the brand that Radio Shack, which is now, I, I, if any of your viewers are under the age of thirty, they will not know what a Radio Shack I is. <laughs> and they used to be like a more serious store. Like I remember going to Radio Shack yeah. when I was a teenager, and you could buy like cable parts, parts to make stuff. Yeah, to yeah. make stuff. And I, but near the end, it was more like we sell cell phones. Like it got yeah. like really kind of lame. But anyway, Realistic was the brand, but they partnered with Moog. So it has Moog guts in it. And yeah. it's sort of this like faux duophonic. I use it for a lot of bass. Sometimes I'll double bass. Um, and then, you know, but it's got also weird. Interesting. And then kill that. Oop, the caps fall off too. <laughs> and during a session, it was funny. My my buddy Bobby was just like, I don't know where this came from. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh, sorry, dude. Popped off this. But yeah, it's it's fun. It's not like the most um, usable thing, you know, because it sort of does one trick. Kind of sounds like video gamey yeah, sometimes, cool. but that's super fun. I'll run a I'll run a pedal through it or so, run through a pedal, excuse me, and 
Especially you're doing film stuff. Yeah, you know, all the time. Having different... One of my favorite John Mayer quotes or something, he like tweeted something where he was like, oh, I'm going to... He's like, spend more time practicing? No, I'm going to go to this wave sale and buy all this junk. And he's like, an artist needs his brushes. And I thought that was a, a perfect way where I'm like, I'm practice? Hell no, I'm going to buy a keyboard. Uh, <laughs> that's way more fun. So yeah, that's kind of the control room. I mean, I got the, we didn't talk about the computer. I don't know if people oh, yeah, care yeah. about the computer. You got the Big Mac. I got the Big Mac, the the Rack the rack Mac Studio Pro M2 chip. Oh, nice. Yeah. I went back to HDX this year. I used oh, to, really? Yes. My trash can, I used the uh, HD Native card forever uh -huh. and it worked great. Zero complaints, zero issues. HD Native was Thunderbolt 2. That's obviously like, you know. Thunderbolt 4 now. Yeah, Thunderbolt yeah. 4. So I looked into getting some adapters allegedly it would have worked but some people were like mm. and i'm like well i love the no latency tracking yeah although with computers being as fast as they are now it's still a problem it can still be a problem it's but, still a problem but so that's awesome yeah. and then the hardware insert thing is like oh, a must. It's such a relief yeah and the cool thing about the links versus like the um focus right i was talking about earlier yeah. they have the coding down somehow so when you open up your io it shows up exactly like a Digi 192 oh, or cool. like an Avid IO. Yeah, yeah. So you're not you're not fighting with like the weird like, you know, I have an Apollo downstairs. I love Apollo. No yeah. hate, but the whole like we have a master oh, out yeah. and then everything's offset. I'm like, guys, yeah. Just get on board. <laughs> yeah. So that's been great having Beautiful. that. Um, HD I'm jealous. Yeah, it's again though like not fun money to spend. We're like cool, I get to do bucks this a year to keep using the same bubbles. thing. Yeah. yeah. I'm already doing. All right. We'll go. On with it. Yes. We'll check out, uh, we'll do the booth first. Vocal and piano booth. This is the vibe room. Vibe room. Yeah. Wow. It's it's really, really quiet in here. You know, we plugged up the window. Um, very dead. So it's it's usually where I'm doing most of my vocals, acoustic guitar. Um, you know, piano here. This is a Yamaha U1 from the 70s. Oh, cool. Or maybe early 80s. I'm not sure. But it sounds great. <laughs> It has the uh, it has a felt bar, which is super fun. You can you know put that on, and then it's super vibey. You know, I see you're using these like Neumann M49s. You know, you, you could just use 57. <laughs> I could. My favorite comment I see is like, dude, everyone listens on the iPhone now. Like, why even, why even try? Well, okay. <laughs> I mean, I wake up asking myself why even try. Like, if that, no, um, it doesn't matter. Uh, no, that's beautiful. No, it's amazing. It's anyone who hasn't used an M49 is like, they're and unbelievable. They were. That was one of the ones where when they found, I found out they were reissuing this, I like scrambled to get some. I actually have serial numbers seven and eight. Oh, so pretty cool. That's cool. Um, but I love these things. Vocals, drum rooms, drum overheads, yep. piano. Um, what a f just full, beautiful picture. Um, and yeah, could you do a 257? Sure. Like, you know, it's not gonna be as fun. People can see opinion. me rolling my eyes. Also, if like no one has like gathered from the, f like by this point in the video that I like just enjoy buying gear and yeah. selling gear and using gear. Uh, like that's why I have this stuff. Is yeah, cause, it's amazing. And it's it's also, it's like you and I both came up in big rooms. Yes, where we used it. You, we used it, you get to hear the difference. Yeah. And you also see our like, you also see how players react. You know, yeah. if, it's a, if an inspiring sound is being captured and played back to them through their phones, yeah. they're gonna play better, Yep. you know? And and then also makes your job easier as the engineer mixer so later. So much easier, yeah. It's like not, a cheat code. Yeah, well, it's, I mean, what's the... You pull up the faders and you go, wow, look how great I am. If a song is like a three-legged stool, like what's the three things? It's like environment, casting, and microphone. Like yeah. if you nail those three things, yeah. then everything else is like gravy. Like it doesn't matter what mic pre you use because yep. it's all that all that's going to be done. And I mean, sure, yes, it doesn't matter what mic pre, but like, yeah. you know, you're not trying to save it going, well, I'll run this really POS mic through a Neve. It's like, that's not going to yeah. you know, change the game. So yeah, I got a uh, couple of amps in here. Now, are these for guitars? Guitars. And then actually, I'll, one thing we didn't talk about in the main room, and I'll go back. Um, I run my Rhodes, I'll, I'll, I'll use either. 
but for the Princeton and then. Oh. You know, you can really. Beautiful. So that's that's fun, and I like sometimes I like writing on the roads, yeah, um, or like writing on the piano here because it's I'm not looking at a screen, yeah, and I get to just not worry about you know oh, what if I tweak this parameter and, mm. uh, and then my chorus sucks. So yeah, exactly. Um, I got a cool old Wurlitzer. Yeah, speaker on it. Sounds, Sounds great. great. I've got the uh, Career Killer, the Theremin. <laughs> um, you know, that that really does, I inherited that when I bought the studio. I don't ever think I've like really recorded it. Um, it's the thing that people go, oh, cool, one of these. And then, I mean, and, and then unless I'm doing like, like a horror movie where it's, bro, my 57 can't. Just... <sighs> Whoops. Sorry, bro. <laughs> it's the worst. Tour over. Amateur hour. <laughs> Is it the 84 on there? Uh, what's R92. That 92, okay. Yes. I so can awesome. mix those up. Uh, it's great. It's a super high SPL. I've used it like front of kick. You can use the vocals, but yeah. it's great. So I, I, I love taking down, I'll do two channels on the API, get a blend, yeah. run it out one bus, and then I have one guitar track to deal with, which is awesome. This is an old, again, I'm gonna get flamed. I don't remember, an M1. It's a Hammond. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I've seen these before. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There is not a Leslie here, unfortunately, but I use this. It's got this, the little speaker in it. Yes, but I use this cool ventilator pedal that's actually really good. And, you know, you can treat it like a real Leslie, but, you know, it's, uh, where's the? Speaker might've been disconnected, but the there is a direct out that runs in here. So, and then I've got this weird thing that I inherited with the studio. Oh, cool. It's a, um, it's like an accordion. Oh, cool. I've I've never ever seen one before. And it's super loud. Like you can hear, it sounds like a jet engine taking off. Yeah. Yeah, it's loud. But it's fun because the bass, you do major chords or minor chords. So. <laughs> it's an angry minor chord. Yeah. Again, I've never ever put it on any recording, but. <laughs> It's kind of a fun vibe piece. Heck yeah, dude. That's the next Morgan Wallen record right there. <laughs> Morgan Wallen and oompa sounds. Um, uh, OP1, classic, really fun. I don't know actually why it's in here. Normally it's in there, but I just put yeah. it in here. I used to use this a lot for just drum samples. Nice. You know, it had the really cool sounding drum samples and the effects. I mean, these things are deep. You can do like all kinds of stuff on them that are, it's too much. Yeah. It's too much. But when um, you want to go there. When you want to go there. Yeah. It's, it's the whole thing. I mean, I remember, I don't know if they still sell them, but there was, I'm going to probably butcher the pronunciation of it. They sold a thing that you could put in your shoe, like an accelerometer. So if you were jumping, yeah, it would side chain or do an effect based on the tempo you were jumping. Like they're, they're very like, <laughs> like, it's like, who would think of that? Yeah. Oh, and this is, uh, this is worth discussing. So I can control the computer. Oh, yeah. from both rooms. My last computer, the trash can, I went through the, pro the trouble of running these ethernet extenders and I had to buy several of them because some of them didn't work or mm -hmm. didn't play nice. This is just a normal HDMI, a long run through the basement. But with the new computer, the Bluetooth is so strong that I can just control it with Bluetooth. wireless. And yeah, yeah and it's amazing all, when all the doors are shut. So it's great. So I only have to have one of these. And so when I go to the drum room, I just bring my keyboard and my mouse with me. Yep. And it's awesome. Man, such a luxury to have the whole house, man. I've dreamed of taking my rental I'm in right now and just turning the whole thing into a yes, it's house studio. You know, bathroom mic for the drums, working backwards. Yeah. Um, that doesn't get used a lot, but it can be fun. Dude, mic's in another room. It's a thing on drums. When you get the cool like slap back, you know what I mean? Like it, you, mm -hmm. when they get far enough away, it's pretty fun. Yeah, and then this is the drum room. Yeah, like that. Wow. All right. Uh, anyone who's ever worked in a big room before sees these overheads and goes, wow. Look at those C12s. Wow. I bet those sound just absolutely perfect. Yeah. There, it's, it's a pretty... I got one, and even as a mono overhead, I was like, 
oh my. Yeah. And then the previous owner had built this out so you get this really, really, cool. really, really tall. So there's you know more diffusion up there. And then I know you're a fan of the Triad Orbit stuff too, but yep. super. So I got a pair of 87s up there, just wow. capturing the the big room thing. And then for close rooms, I just got these last year, and I am so pumped. I've been looking for a pair. These 56s? are 56s. Can 56s. And all original, no reskin capsule, wow. AC701 tubes. The only thing that's not original is the power supply, mm -hmm. but I'm okay with that because uh, it's a better spec and it lowered the noise floor. But I've used them as overheads, piano, drum room. Just amazing picture of the oh, kit. Yeah. Like it's, it's kind of one of those things where it's, again, using the real thing, I just push up the faders and I'm like, this is what this, I'm done. That's it? Like, you know, maybe a little fab filter, cleaning up some stuff, but like, yeah. that's it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Wow, look at that. You got a plumbing device over there. <laughs> yeah, this is the Periscope microphone. Um, there's a compressor built into it. Oh, runs off cool. runs off Phantom. It, you know, it's a... It does like the really big blown yeah. out thing. It was funny. I had it like kind of in between the snare and the kick for this session last week. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it was too much. I had to put it out here. So I, f I find when I point it sort of away from things that are happening, it captures yeah. more of the room chaos. So that's why it looks ridiculous. 414s on toms, classic. D12, F47. D12, F47, kick sub. On that kick drum too, um, that thing sounds so righteous. Yeah, that's a vintage Slingerland kick from the 60s. Uh, those toms are a Gretsch broadcaster reissue. That snare is super cool. It's a 1920s Ludwig dance dance model. The thing sounds huge. So it's it is it's a poor man's black beard. Weird. So it's a, it's a nickel over brass. Like if you lift that thing up, yeah, it is. Heavy. It's like a tank. I believe it is effectively a black beauty without the engraving. It, what's crazy is how deep it sounds for how yes skinny it is. It's tiny. Yeah, um, it's awesome. And then Bayer. Is that 201 on 201, snare? Yeah. yeah. Top, 57 bottom. It's 201 top, 57 bottom. Sometimes that changes. Sometimes I'll do 57 top. Or if I'm playing something more delicate, um, this is my like percussion station that I have set up oh, again. Oh, perfect. Um, so this is a Telefunken M280N, but it's, this, it's the exact same thing as a KM84. I, oh, okay. I don't know the history on this, but before Neumann could sell microphones in the United States, they had mm -hmm. to badge them as Telefunkens. Oh, okay. So it is a Neumann KM84 without the pad. That's so it's cool. got Neumann capsules. So percussion, sometimes I'll turn it on when I play drums too and blow it up. And sure. Or, or a really cool crash cymbal mic, I don't know. <laughs> I've experimented too, moving these drums around this room. I'll throw panels up here on these rafters to like really shut it down, oh, yeah. make it dry. Um, so it's, it's fun. It's actually a pretty flexible room and I don't know why, but sometimes it's easier to work with a small room. Yeah. You know, like big rooms are amazing. Yeah. But unless you have like nice gobos and stuff, you're trying to shut stuff down. Everywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's, it can be kind of like overwhelming and then. Which is um, funny. You know, you get in a big room and you're like, all right, can we get more gobos? Yeah, exactly. Can we shut this down? Uh, my closet, so uh, everyone can see it's disorganized, but I got some cool stuff. I got a pair of 67s. I just got a pair and I put them away um, because I, I just needed space of the AEA R44Cs. Oh, cool. And I know you just got one too, right? I have the. N8. Oh, the R44. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The 44. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, and dude, it's aw they're, they're awesome. Dude, it's right Front there. Front of kick. Right yeah, there. and I, I did I did mono overhead and then like one right about where Oof. you're standing. Oof. So fun. So cool. Put sounding. it closer, dude. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Put it closer. Yeah, uh, Soyuz 017 to Oh, yeah. 441s, uh, RE20, SM7, Coles 4038s. Wow. D190. Literally got it all. I have a Sony C800 in the other room. Oh, wow. So, yeah. I, I try to have all my options. Pretty, pretty bitching, dude. Yeah, man. It's killer. Uber jealous. Can I just be your neighbor and just <laughs> exactly? Also when do you leave here? and when's this? What's the security code? Yes, uh, exactly. <laughs> and I guess should we? Do you want to go down to the 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 pit of despair? Sure. Where the oh uh, oh downstairs? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. All right, watch your step. All right, so we're down here. The basement. We'll start over here. So one of the cool things I got with this studio is a real plate reverb. Wow, so that came with the house. Came with the house. That's nice. For very probably obvious reasons, he didn't want to move it. <laughs> yeah. It's a Lawson tube plate reverb. Actually, I don't, I can't, I don't know if it's tube. It's a Lawson reverb. And Lawson makes Lawson microphones here in Nashville. And I think this is kind of his EMT 140 
yeah. copy if you can. Sure. It's brighter than the 140s we had at the village. Yeah. Uh, it's those were more mellow. Yeah. But again, I don't know if the plates were more mellow or the fact that they were three stories up running through a crusty old neve that they were right. old. Like I don't know. So I've I've got, I've got a a fab filter preset that's make it sound a little more like that. Yeah. It's the sound I'm familiar with. And then I have an AKG BX20 spring reverb that unfortunately is out for repair at the moment. But when it works, it sounds good. Well, that's crazy. So, super cool. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> you know, it's just like so much cool shit. It's a lot of fun stuff. It's all the stuff, you know, that we use in the big rooms. Yeah. And then where I store Whoa, all my drums, yeah. among this other things. Nice. Nice shelves to organize everything, keep it up off the floor. Well, when, I did have a, <laughs> well, 100% man. So when I moved in, that's the, that door is like the steps up and out. And when I first moved in here, and you can still kind of see some of the staining on the concrete, we had, you know, three days of crazy rain. Yep. And the hatch that kind of goes over those steps, I learned was not watertight. And I walked down here and the sump pump's going off. And I was like, uh -oh. oh, you know, yeah. like that's, this is not, Good. So I've shored everything up. The house doesn't leak anymore. Yeah. It's bone dry. Great. But I, because of that now, everything that is valuable is up. Because even nice this, shelves. this dehumidifier, this is the second one I had. The first one completely backed up and started pouring water onto the floor. And I walked, oh, I, was, I was like a weekend. I come, I come in here and I'm like, cool. cool. <laughs> Sweet, man. <laughs> the dehumidifier did nothing but in fact humidify the basement, just pouring yeah. water. But yeah, we, we'll kind of go this way around cool vintage oh, pair what, what, what up that? nelson uh, these are timbales okay so i just have them stacked inside one another but they are uh 60s copper timbales i had to do something for a tv show that was really really timbale heavy and i went down there and they delivered beautiful little bongo drums cool anf pan kick drum oh super weird it actually sounds really huge yeah um, so basically two rims yeah, I mean, there's nothing really interesting. Again, sounds good. This was a complete impulse buy, this kit. It's a 1930s Ludwig. These are my initials. Yep. And I walked in there. Easy. And I was like, well, I don't need to eat. Uh, I guess, I, <laughs> I guess, I guess I'll, I'll, so, but it, it's super interesting. It's got tacked drum heads, what meaning that? like they're not coming off. Yeah. And yeah, and they sound, you know. Super vintage and cool. Um, this kick drum is massive. I think it's a 26. Yeah, that's a big boy. The floor tom is interesting. It, it doesn't have legs. It sits in the, like, this cradle yeah. that opens up. So it's it's very, I've, when I've set it up, I was like, this is funky. Yeah, the drum key that's, yeah. that's completely rusted in there, like yeah. not coming off. Oh, I did it. <laughs> I made it happen. <laughs> Now it's gonna break I'm, the shell. I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. This was an experiment that failed, not because the companies aren't great, but because of my interest and stick to itiveness yeah. stopped. But there's this company, was this company called Sunhouse? They make these drum triggers. I think they got bought by Evans. Okay. But it interfaces completely seamlessly with Ableton, and you can actually like trigger melodic function and all this stuff. Okay. They're very, very, very cool. I got into it for about six weeks. And then completely was like, never mind. Uh, yeah, so it lives here. Let's do this. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I'll stick with the real ones. Big snare collection, so I have options. Aww. This was the first nice drum I ever got. My parents bought it for me for Christmas. It's a Tama Kenny Arnoff signature model. Beautiful. But I was 15 or 16, and I've had it ever since. Wow. Because it was like the only snare I took with me to sessions. Yeah. And it's be like, do you have anything else? I'm like, I have this. Yeah. Do you want me to tune it down? A little <laughs> yeah, bit? yeah. Exactly. I'll tape it up. So kind of from left to right, cool old Ludwig Pioneer, the green sparkle drum, yeah. uh, ANF Rude Boy, which just sounds like Justin Timberlake records. It's like that, that like yeah. super loud choked, cool thing. This is a cool one. It's a uh, Je Jahara or Jahara Wood, I don't know how to say uh -huh. it. Brady drum from Australia. Yep. Super fun. Gretsch Max Roach Signature. Pan Snare, that yeah. goes with the pan kick. Yeah. Again, super interesting. Pork Pie that my friend, uh, who is also a drummer, Growing up gave to me, and it's kind of funny. You can see where my collecting things, collecting uh, started, but he wrote on the inside, uh, good luck, Ryan, you snare whore. <laughs> so I have a history of hanging on to stuff. Uh, Superphonic, really cool, gutsy sounding Craviato. Oh yeah. And beautiful drum. This is an Anton Fig signature model, and you, I can tune this into the basement, and it sounds really cool. It's just wow. like, pfft. 
wood hoops. A very funny experiment. I was like, I'm gonna be a super cool guy and buy my own drum shell and buy all this hardware and like try to put something together. And I brought it to Pro Drum in LA and they were like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> and they were super kind and they yeah. put it together for me. He replaced all the parts. He's like, whatever junk you bought online, man, was junk. And yeah. like, I'm gonna hook you up. And so yeah. they were very, very cool. It doesn't sound uh, incredible. It sounds loud. It's like the loudest drum I own. Wow. It's too loud. I've hung on to it because no one wants to buy like a weird, like <laughs> D DIY, you know, artisanal acrylic. It's the Peterson. Yeah. Something Smack right. Yeah. Down. <laughs> yeah, V1. <laughs> ANF, a 15 inch snare. This one again, I can tune super low and it sounds awesome. Nice. And then vintage uh, Acrolyte, which, you know, the, ac it. the Acrolyte and the Superphonic are kind of like cousins. Yeah, they sound great. This is the kick that that goes with the two toms you saw upstairs. Oh right, right, right. Uh, Gretsch broadcaster reissue. Yamaha. It doesn't get used a ton. It's very modern sounding, but mm -hmm. I, it does it does get used. But it's like the first drum kit, like real drum set I spent real money on. Yeah. And so I've kind of I kind of can't sell it. I remember I like hemmed and hawed for like six weeks. Yeah. On this kit, and then the guy at Guitar Center just kept calling me. He's like, dude. You have a dep are you buying this thing or not? And I'm like, yeah. I don't know, bro. And I, finally, <laughs> I finally did. So it's been with me ever since. And then, yeah, the toms that go with that kick, the vintage oh, nice. Timberland toms. Yeah. So. Sick, dude. You yeah, got man. a little workstation, workstation here to work on everything? Yeah, I do. I, and any, you dude, know, drum check out this alarm clock right here. Dream Machine. Dream Machine. Dude, I've had that since I was like Sony. seven. And the hilarious part is it ended up in a box. Moved out with me from California. I don't know why I still had it in California. It showed up here at the studio and I was like, I'm gonna plug that thing in and it's sure enough it works. Little radio. Little clock know? radio. But yeah, it's a handy to have a place to you know, change heads or do whatever. And then the rest is just kind of storage. It's nice to these have are, all the storage though. Yeah, these are dog houses. So if someone has cabs that are really loud, I can put them oh, in here. Wow. Right now they're, just, they're full of junk. Yeah. <laughs> so I won't open them. But that doesn't happen all that often. But yeah. if someone showed up with a Marshall stack, you could put it in there and you wouldn't hear it. So you can kind of hang out down here. It's obviously not like most conducive to hanging. Yeah, and let's then go hang out in the basement. Yeah, that's sort of like the center of business where I send emails <laughs> and print lyrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, and actually, you know, it's it can be kind of annoying, but like a lot of film and television stuff has contracts to sign. Even if they're one-page yeah. agreements, a lot of them are like, well, we don't accept DocuSign anymore, which uh, is such a pain in the butt. So you got to print it, sign it, sign scan it, it, scan it back in. It's helpful to have a place to do that that's not also in your creative. Shout place. out to DocuSign, bro. <laughs> I, also, I love that you got the kids' shelves and Heck the tubs yeah, in man. here. Still have these in Jack's room. Useful. They it's, work. It's funny thinking about it from a studio organization perspective. That's uh, pretty useful. It gets the job done. Yeah. Because you can, you know, take the lid off. You know? No, and it, it, you can see it. Yep. You know, whatever it is you need. Where can people find your stuff? I'm not the most active online, but I do have an Instagram uh, and it's Bearcat Recording. It is I'll set, put that in the description. Put that in the description. It's set to private right now. I'll, I'll undo that. Yeah, that's where you can. I, I have a personal page, but I really don't use it at all. So the, the Bearcat is where I post like what's happening with the studio and nice. my shenanigans. There's some videos on there currently of my in progress cleaning the basement because it was sort of a weird game of Tetris. Well, this is a, an amazing spot that you have here. Thank you. This is really, really nice. And um, I'm, well, I think I can speak for everyone else watching this video. We have Gear Envy gas, a uh, full mm -hmm. fresh load of gas now. Yep, I want all this stuff. Really love the center section here with the controller. I mean, it's really dialed in. So uh, yeah, I'll link your Instagram is, do you, anything else you wanna like plug or anything? There's a couple of things coming out, but I'm not allowed to talk about them yet. I know, isn't that the worst? Not it's that like... not that it's like super cool or anything, but I've just, I'm, I'm under an NDA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but there are, there is stuff I'm working on. A couple artists that I've recently worked with that are completely worth checking out. Cal Stamp cut his whole record here. C-A-L. Stamp, S-T-A-M-P. We've been working together quite a while, so he's he's awesome, and I played drums on it, produced it, mixed it. Yeah, I would check him out. Drumming thing too. You do you can you can do remote drums. I absolutely can do remote and, drums. And and if I wanted to hit you up on Instagram, drop me a DM. Slide into those DMs with the drum requests. All right, cool. Yeah, because I'm sure they're gonna sound awesome. What if it's just trash? Just horrible just trash. trash. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, that would be. Uh, <laughs> I'm just. I'm actually. All I'm doing right now is just holding in jokes. I'm gonna, keep, I'm gonna hold them all in. Oh yeah, you got a Grammy over there. I do have a Grammy over there. What's up with that? Uh, in 2009, 
I stole a Grammy. No, uh, in 2009, <laughs> I got a Grammy for engineering a Switchfoot record. The Switchfoot record, Hello Hurricane. So. Was that the big one? No, I, uh, I mean, did, I wish. Did well. no. oh, okay. uh, it, it did okay. It was not okay. like their first two. Okay. So that was an interesting record for them because they had gotten out of their deal with like Columbia at the time and were sort of independent. Oh, okay. And then I actually got brought in at the end. Ended up sometimes, some songs was just like, you're just going to overdub some of the stuff they've already recorded. Yeah. And other songs, it was like, scrap it, ground up. Yeah. Well, so, that's yeah. cool, man. I, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Sweet. Well, I, I guess that's it, everyone. We'll, uh, Thanks for coming. Yeah, oh, thank you for having me. Yeah. And uh, we'll see everyone else in the next video. Hit the like button, subscribe, follow him. Uh, goodbye. See ya.